Hi guys, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to be taking you through units, prefixes and scientific notation. So let's get started. If we have a look at SI units, first of all, you don't really need to remember these, you just need to be aware that they exist. And these are common units which are used worldwide. So you'll see that uh, SI stands for International System of Units. And we'll see that length, so a distance is measured in meters, mass is measured in kilograms, not grams, time is measured in seconds, and that's why we always use these things when doing like speed distance time formulas and stuff like that. Uh, electric current is measured using the ampere or amps in A, uh, thermodynamic temperature in Kelvin, uh, amount of substance is the mole, and luminous intensity is the candela. And then one last thing just to note before we go on to prefixes is that when doing calculations, you really need to put units after your final numbers, your answers. And that is because you'll just lose final marks, okay? A lot of pupils lose marks just for forgetting to put in units after the numbers, okay? So make sure you're doing that when you're trying questions. So the next thing to look at then is prefixes and scientific notation. So prefixes, as I said before, you will have used these before. Um, and why, why these are used is because they form multiples and submultiples of a unit. So they allow us to write down large numbers in a shorthand way. Okay, so you, instead of writing down really, really big numbers in a question, the examiners might give you loads of numbers, but with prefixes in front of the unit. So what you need to be able to do is convert from prefixes into numbers. You don't actually have to convert from numbers back into prefixes. Okay, so all we need to do is recognize a prefix and substitute it with a certain number in scientific notation. So this table here is something that you're just going to have to learn because you do not get this in the exam anymore. They used to provide this in the exam on the data sheet, but it's no longer there. Okay, so if we have a look, we've got six main prefixes and one that I've kind of just thrown in there, um, which is a common one that we've seen, we're familiar with centi, from centimetre. Okay, so centi means times 10 to the power of minus 2. For example, 30 centimetres is 30 times 10 to the minus 2 metres, or 0 0.3 metres. Okay, um, other examples, so if we go up the way, we'll see that the powers of we've got a power of three patterns. So we've got 10 to the three, 10 to the six, 10 to the nine. If we go down the way, we've got 10 to the minus three, 10 to the minus six, and 10 to the minus nine. So it's worth remembering these in their patterns of three, six, nine, and minus three, minus six, minus nine. Okay, so you need to be able to recognize that kilo, this symbol K, means times 10 to the three. So for example, 67 kilometers is 60, 67 times 10 to the three meters. Um, mega, this would be a capital M, times 10 to the 6, so that's times a million, would be 16.2 mega ohms, would be 16.2 times 10 to the 6 ohms. Giga, the capital G, is times 10 to the 9, which would be 42.5 gigahertz, would become 42.5 times 10 to the 9 hertz. Okay, so that's just some examples there. Um, going lower this time, we've got milli like millimetre and milliseconds, things like that. So you've got times 10 to the minus 3, so 42 milliseconds, as an example, is 42 times 10 to the minus 3 seconds. Micro, uh, times 10 to the minus 6, would be 3.2 micro sieverts, which is 3.2 times 10 to the minus 6 sieverts. And nano, uh, we often use nanometers to mean wavelengths, so um, times 10 to the minus 9 is nano. So an example of that is 650 nanometers would be 650 times 10 to the minus 9 meters, which is a typical wavelength of red light. Okay, then some wee warnings that I've put just below it, which is that the SI unit of mass we saw on the previous page was kilograms. So we don't have to convert the kilo part of kilograms into grams because grams is not the SI unit of mass. Okay, we use kilograms. So another one to watch out for is milliseconds, which is MS, okay, and this is um, not meters per second, okay, so meters per second is MS to the power of minus one, whereas milliseconds is just MS, so don't get confused between the two because they look quite similar. Okay, and lastly, just a wee note on scientific notation, which is something, again, that you'll be used to, which says... The scientific notation allows us to write down large numbers quickly and should be used instead of writing lots of zeros down. So we don't want to see final answers that have hundreds of zeros in them because that's not really useful to anyone. Okay, it's easy to see at a glance if you've written down a number with scientific notation or with a prefix. 
Okay, so as an example, if you wanted to write down this number here, which is 5 million, so there's six zeros there, um, this can be written in scientific notation as 5 times 10 to the power of 6, which is 5 multiplied by 10 six times. Another way of looking at this, though, is to firstly insert the decimal point just after the first number, and then count how many places to the right we move. And you'll see that we move six places to the right. Okay, similarly, uh, to write small numbers, we, were gonna, we would use negative powers in scientific notation. So this really small number, 0 0.000005, can be written as 5 times 10 to the power of minus 6, which is 5 divided by 10 six times. And this time, again, if you wanted to see um, the, what the power is going to be, we put the decimal point after the 5, and then we move back 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 places, okay, to get to that number. So... That's it pretty much from me guys. I hope you found this video useful and I'll see you in the next one.